Welcome back everybody. Glad you could make it. Let me show you the clock. Oh, and by the way, this is Just Mike. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And let's take a look now. So this is a clock. It's got the it's a plastic bird. His mouth is the only thing that looks like it opens. Uh, the chains have pretty much fallen off, but I can, I notice the music's starting to play, so let me pull that chain. Okay, it just fell off, but I do know the music works. Anyway, this does come with the topper. This is what the clock looks like with the top on there. I gotta find my tape measure, but realistically, this is a pretty tall clock, I'd say... 16 18 inches you measure from the lowest point to the highest point when you're measuring a cuckoo clock and same with the side you met normally it's your topper measure from here to here if you're ordering a topper from anybody such as on ebay normally you yourself measure from here to here and let's say that's uh let's just say it's 10 inches that means you want a topper that measures 10 and a half to 11 inches at least because the topper needs to go past the edge of this roof and you also want your topper to match whatever this is here because if you had this and the oak you found an oak leaf, leaf top with the deer head let's just say the oak leaves don't match this you wouldn't buy it nice it comes with the topper they are not cheap when it comes to ebay you're trying to find one that matches and it happens to come with the pendulum as well anyway as you saw it's got the dancers on here and the hands oh good i say the nut isn't tight but that's good because it's usually hard to get off you can see the music box screws looking at the bellows it has a plastic top so i'd say it isn't this old of a clock now on the movement it says 25 which i do believe the 25 means is a one day clock and it has slash and i do believe that's a let me get a better look at this i would almost say that says it's a 78 so I'm going to guess this clock was made in 1978. Looking at it, I see it's got the plastic gear on the music box, which that's usually the first thing to go on any of these music boxes, that plastic gear. But obviously this bellow here is broke off and the music box gear clicks right into this movement so anyway because it's all tangled up falling apart and whatnot and needs cleaned let me take the hands off let the cuckoo bird go back in if he wants to or release him from the door i'll take these chains off and we'll see about taking the bellows off By the way, this came with two weights, so I'm going to have to get another weight that matches and would be matching the top two. And this is, a, to me, this is a sign of a newer clock also compared to your 30s and 40s uh, because this is all one piece instead of a wire dropped into the molten metal. This says 320. I do believe I have some. I'm not sure if I have newer ones like this. This weight doesn't even say 320 on it. So whether this is even a matching pair, even though they look the same. And that's all really I'm looking for is them to look the same. Now as I'm taking this out, 
you'll notice there's no door over on this side that might make it a little more difficult for adjustment on this music box let's see, pull it out of here but lining this gear up shouldn't be too hard the main thing is make sure the clock has already cuckooed pull the chain to make sure the music played even though the music box isn't hooked up and then what you'll do is you'll turn this to this blank area right here here There, now it's shut off. Now we're matched up, in which it did finish playing. But we're matched up now, and now you should be able to install it if you're, if you're done with your clock. Again, you have the plastic gear that always breaks, I'd swear. So it's good to keep these cleaned and lubed. It's got the plastic tube on here. So when it is time for this thing to shut down or whatever this fan normally goes over and hits this and instead of you hearing it go whack 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 it'll be quiet because it'll be hitting that rubber tube and we can see that this is kind of dusty dirty inside so i'm not getting carried away but i will do some some cleaning on here and of course it's got the nail here so I'll reach in here and just get a little bit of a pry and I can get this wire off that goes to the lift arm okay this bellows you can see right there in the center it's broke and on the side so we'll be replacing both of them realistically i prefer to replace them both because that way they will both drop the same and whatnot yes i gotta go pick up that wire so here we have them evened up on the bottom these are the lift wires you notice this one's taller usually the one on the right side will be taller and that's the same in this case So, normally I'll take this out, but because I got the camera running, let's take this out and see if we can twist this around. To get the man out, or the dancers I should say. The cuckoo bird don't want to let go. There we go. So this chain's all tangled up inside there is why I can't do too much with it. There it fell out finally. This here's got a pl plastic gear here, plastic gear there, plastic. And when it comes to plastic, that's why I say those are the ones that are a newer clock this seems to turn pretty easily this the bar comes clear down onto this wheel here so what we're going to start with on the back i've already untied the wire spring to the gong So now we can take it out. You can see the longer one is the one that hits the star wheel. The shorter one locks it underneath here in place. When you took pictures, you'll obviously you want to know, but usually your shorter lift arm 
will be next and then the longer one will be on the bottom. It's different on some clocks so pay attention to that. This one here has the locking and the lift part here also and so does this one. Here we'll go ahead and take the star wheel off. This is a nice one that has a screw so it's very easy to adjust to get the cuckoo to work properly for you. This here is the wire that goes into the music box to stop it. Depends on where it is when it's cuckooing and then releases the the fan that it usually hits the fan and so that's what this one wire here is for otherwise this big gear here that's where the music box gears to so let's take this off this is a simple screw here So looking on what we'll call the front side of the clock, this is where the hands are. To release this, there's an E-clip right here on the bottom that we need to push off or whatever. You might be able to get behind and get it started, which I was able to. A decent e-clip and with that off now this should come right off so let's go ahead and get this apart again I did take pictures to make sure things go back the way they're supposed to So to release a lot of this stuff, this is your major one because it releases this gear and it releases the snail. There's one here that releases this, which is your count wheel. I don't know if I can... There, it's shut off now. Because this here that they... That Mark calls a Pac-Man and I do too. This here drops right in the mouth of it. That's what you want once this here shuts off like it is right now. So anyway, let's take these E-clips out. Because this clock especially is a open clock, that's another reason why it's absolutely filthy. Because all the dust comes in where the two doors are, we'll call it, where the people come through dancing. And where the chains come through, they're always pulling dust up in. So that's an extra thing that causes these things to dust up. But mainly because this one has the dancers. So anyway, now that we got, out, got that off, we have this here washer this is what's it's big and that's what's holding this down and holding your snail from coming off so don't forget to put that back on this here should come off sometimes it don't there we go these teeth are what what's counting the hour however far it falls down and it falls onto the snail each one of these drops tell the clock how many times the cuckoo it'll drop on here such as the lower one if it drops in here it's going to know it's 12 o'clock if it drops way up here it's going to be one o'clock and as the hour turns this turns also so that way when it drops it knows what time it is. 
So that'll be a timing issue you'll deal with later. Again, these, this is the two point star I call it. Each time one of these comes up, one is a little bit taller than the other one. On this one, I don't think, I'm pretty sure the music plays on the half hour and it plays on the hour. But usually one's shorter, so your clock would cuckoo once on the half hour and it would, well, it's still the same there. It, this clock should cuckoo once on the half hour, then play the music. And then the other one will be a little bit taller, so it raises these up just a little bit further and causes it to drop onto the snail and count the hour, whatever the hour is. Now we have a wire spring here, and it's pushing down on this part that goes into the Pac-Man's mouth, we'll say. And also this little arm here is what counts the hour on the part that has the teeth on it. So we'll take that spring off here. And it's just hooked to the frame right there. Just the same, I can't get that out, so I'm just going to have to, as I take it apart, this here is pop riveted on. I put a drop of clock oil on there trying to pop that gear off. It don't want to come off. Not a heart attack. This here is going to stay here. Yes, I can move up and down, but it'll still get cleaned. It's not going to hurt anything. Now to take this off, you'll want to move your cuckoo wire just clipped around this frame here get it off in here you want to separate these make it a little bit easier and now if you use a bigger screwdriver and just give it a twist that up by the clamp there see it's already fallen off Easy peasy. There we go. And now, let me get my fancy legs, hook onto here. Then we'll take these four nuts off and try to separate this so you can see what the gears look like. Even though we have pictures coming in, it's nice to also see up above or looking down to make sure your gears look like they're supposed to in the pictures. So now that we have it free, let's see if we can get this up, in which this is gonna fall off and might hang up on a gear it's not that much of a heart attack. Hopefully your gears are all going to fall down. Say so stay in place in so many words. There we go. You tell how dirty this is. It's been setting quite a while facing down and that's why you can actually see the gears in here so this is what it looks like and I'll take my camera and get a picture of it you have a winder here winder here and a winder here and that's because the music box like I say runs on this wheel here you got your fan that slows them down so they didn't cuckoo too fast. That there's not going to come off. Here's the winder to it. And that's still good. It's got 
what I consider one of them cheaper winders because of those plates instead of a wire with a clicker. They work. Uh, because we're down here, let's take the music box winder off. It's holding good. I can feel some drag, so it definitely needs a little bit of grease in here. Or oil. And this is the wheel that won't come off because I tried taking that gear off underneath and I can't get it off. Anyway, coming back to this, this is going to be stuck on here because the Pac-Man is on it. This here will come off. Try to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see. Now pay attention to the angle this is going in at. This divot here on, on that uh, arm there it goes behind this gear like this this here peg goes into that hole there and that's what brings the cuckoo bird in and out uh, to finish taking this off this here is the part of the time that the pendulum will rock and make it advance or whatever. Let's pull that out of the way. Well, that was almost stuck in there. So getting that off, this here lever comes around and then up and right there is a E-clip we need to take off. And then you can lift this up. Yeah, push it back further because this here has a trigger uh, wheel inside there. So this sits kind of like this, but on the other side of that gear. So that's just things to remember which side it's supposed to be. Yes, it's supposed to be sticking out. And now I can take this smaller gear off. This one here has a pin it's a warning pin so it'll move so far when it's just about to do its job and then when it's ready to do its job a lever will move out of the way and then it'll start spinning and then it'll catch again as soon as it's done doing its job of cuckooing or whatever so we're on this side it has the winder Same cheap winder, but it works, and it is working just fine. Not too bad. Dirty, but not too bad. And this will not come out. This will not come out. This will not come out. Lever won't come out. This gear has that in the way. And it's really dry feeling, but that's what turns the Pac-Man. Obviously this doesn't come out because that's a shaft and that's pressed on. I don't want to mess with that. But you'll see that spring in here. That spring is what keeps your hands from just flopping back and forth. They need some kind of a stress on them and this is pressed down onto that spring just so tight so you can still turn the hands but then this wheel like I say will not come off because it's part of this and it does not want to come undone. Why push a clock unless I have to? So as far as I'm concerned this here and everything else except this is ready for the movement cleaner. Let me see if I can wiggle them off. Yeah. So this has an E-clip here is why you could not pry that out of there. 
And these people you'll want to hand wash because if you don't, they're going to lose all their paint and you have to repaint them anyway. So now you can take out the four small E-clips on here. Get the gears to come out so that way once they're clean you can make sure the shafts are clean and a little bit of, usually you can put in a drop of oil. So I got all the parts washed cleaned. I went ahead and polished it, this one. Compared to no polish. And I don't normally polish, but I thought I'd go ahead and do that one. And like I say, this here doesn't show who made this or anything else. Just has the numbers up there and possibly when this thing was made. And the 25 means it's a one day clock. 76 I do believe means that's when this clock was built. So as for the bird, I ran it through the cleaner and he's just chocolate colored. I don't know that I want a chocolate bird. So I'm going to repaint him so he kind of looks like a normal cuckoo bird. I'll show you what he, I think he's supposed to look like. Now there's a chance this could have been, I don't believe it's supposed to be brown. But I've seen them uh, almost a transparent blue, bluish green color. You almost think they're glow in the dark. Let me show you what I'm going to turn this into. This is what I'm going to make the bird look like. So when it comes to these winders, obvious they are different heights of the post. And you also have this one here with this big plastic gear. And what you need to do is go back at your pictures and see where it sat, how it sat or whatever. This one here is the one that has the star wheel on it that goes clear through this goes clear through the plate and if that's so then that would make these line up properly in the plates I guess to say also you have all these pieces and you may might think you have a nightmare like I've said before separate these so you can see what goes inside the movement and what doesn't. For example, this is on the outside. Outside. These uh, lift wires. This here, I'm going to call it an outside, but you put this in last. Outside, 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 outside. I think I have them separated. So realistically, you don't have that many pieces to put inside the clock, and some of them are already on here. So anyway, I'm going to get my legs back on here, and we'll start putting, putting it together. And by the way, after I've scrubbed this, I went ahead and ran a toothpick in each one of the holes this way. Got a new, new toothpick. Put it in this way to clean out the extra that doesn't just come right out and I must have thrown away the toothpicks because I don't see them right now so 
So I have these in order how they need to be. This one here has the plastic wheel. This one here will go on last. It's got the short little stubby. And this one here has the peg that will come up through the plate to hold the star wheel. At 12 o'clock, now watch this gear here. It's going to fall clear down into the mouth of this. It fell all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we'll watch for the half hour. On the half hour, this does not fall. Well, it went a little fast. I don't have the fan in, like I said. So that's 12.30. This is coming over for the 1 o'clock. It just fell. And it's awful close to the end, so I don't really like that. There's the 1 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and install my fan now. And then we're going to work on the dancers. I already put these three in. So I do is I'll put this in. I'm going to go ahead and use a toothpick. It's probably easier. Put a dab of oil on there. Get it in. And now we'll get the E-clip. Set it on there. And this needs to drop just a little bit. And then you can push them on. And then I'll go ahead and add a dab of oil to the top on each one of these because I want these things to turn freely so now I'm ready for the people let me go wash those up and I'll be right back so here are the people dancers and I wanted to point something out to you when you hear me talk about the 10 foot rule, as in the clock no one pays that much attention to, possibly because of the carving might be broke or something, and it's just a little bit, and so you'll stain it so it doesn't stick out so much. Look at these. These are absolutely awful on the way they painted it, but does anyone ever notice?
they're so small and they're up inside the clock or well they dance onto the outside and that's all people see are the dancers not the awful paint job these things have the hole in the bottom you just push them on there up to that tab or that uh, e-clip that's on there and it doesn't matter which way they're turned they're gonna be dancing that's all they're there for is a be dancing So now I gotta clean up the end of this and then we're gonna stick it in and put the e-clip that belongs on here also. So on here, the bottom, I put a dab of grease on both sides because this here, the top of this, we'll call it shaft, is gonna be resting on your clock right there and so it doesn't hurt to add that there also I'm gonna add and I'll do it again but I'm gonna put put a little bit of oil on here easier if I use my toothpick but I'm not gonna <laughs> so now this just sets down in here So let's put this e-clip on here and then we'll oil it again coming off of we'll say the top where this e-clip is that's down in so this wheel will turn it's a music box So the next thing I want to do is put the lift arms and the gong back on. So we have one, two, and the gong. We'll put the longer lift arm on there first. All you do is just pop it in the hole and in the hole down here. Get the lock lever down in. Let me set that down so I can work with this. And then you just swing it around. The shorter lift arm. Swing it around. And then the gong is the same way. And now the gong, I'm going to go ahead and bring the wire through the hole that's right there. And bring it back up and give it some spring action. Okay, I got that on. Now I'll take the star wheel, just set it on there. And... Well, it's supposed to stay on there. It's not screwed in. What I want to do is have this triggered and make it work. If I can reach the gear. Get that all the way up. And there it's shut off. And I need to hold it there. 
move this, move these out of the way here. So I need to hold it there so I can figure out this here. Oops, did I get off? No, but I'm still there. These here are normally up here. So you got the gong first. Gong, cook, coo. And what that's what I normally do is I look for the last coo. Let me snug this up just a little bit so I can show you a little bit easier. I'm after is the gong coo coo and that last coo is where I want to stop right now the gong isn't touching and that's a good thing and I'm going to practice after I tighten the screw down that when this thing gets closer to the hour we're supposed to go or cuckoo once or however many times the pin will move the wheel with the pin on it will move around and might start lifting this and i don't like the idea of loading the clock up already i prefer to be easier for this thing to run it's too tight in there now with these arms in the way. So here we go. It's going to ring once. Gong. Coo. Coo. And it still moves. Oh, right, maybe I have another ring. So it moved just a little bit further than I wanted, but if you can see this, this arm down here isn't touching the star yet. Maybe I'll throw a chain on here and that way it'll be easier for me to turn and we can see how this is running. And now to show this thing work. Get my fingers out of the way. So here we have a little bit of space underneath this that tells me this thing's ready to go to stick back into the clock as in the timing set for the cuckoo bird and the gong. Setting this arm in, this here piece needs to be behind this triggered part right there. So you push these into place, repinch these two so they're snug but not so tight that this bird's not going to be able to move, I guess I'll put it that way. So now I hook the spring back up. So a new bird to a chocolate colored bird that's been painted it looks like a normal bird so now let's get this lever on this one here this will go inside the music box 
and it stops the fan. Let me loosen my screw a little bit. This will need to be adjusted once it's inside the box. But it's on now. And that looks like all the parts that go back onto here, excluding our pendulum part. And I'll put that on later because putting this back in the box, I got to deal with the people getting through the door and not getting hung up. So I think our next step is to deal with these. Getting them rebuilt so they'll work again. I use Tyvek paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean up all this old leather that's on here. I usually cut back the paper just halfway. I found it's easier just to cut the paper off, keep this flat surface, and take off this angled part here. And then that way I can get my new hinge back on here. So anyway, let me get those together. I do have a video on rebuilding these with Tyvek paper if you want to take a look at that video. But this video is already long enough. Appreciate you guys stopping by, watching to the end, hopefully, and until next time, God bless. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe because it is free.